This is the eighth and final section of chapter two, and this section is on non-uniform composite laminas and frameworks. OK, so how might these questions be different? Well, if we're talking about a framework, then the pieces of wire that make up a framework may be of different masses. So that means when we do our working, we use the mass of the wire as opposed to its length. So you'll just be given uh, masses. And if you're given lengths, then you just ignore them. Well, what we might have is a lamina uh, where a corner has been folded over, folded over corner, in which case we need to add on the extra mass. So here's an example. Imagine we've got this square lamina here. Let me take, there's a dotted line. That's going to be where we fold the lamina and it gets folded across so that that triangle now rests on top of the original lamina. So, it, you know, it's still there, but in a different position. So the way that we're going to do this work is we'll find the mass and the center of mass of the square. We'll subtract the triangle piece that's now missing, but that now needs to be added on in a different place. So the center of mass that's subtracted from this now gets added on in a different position. So they don't cancel each other out because the center of mass is now somewhere different. Number 21. The lamina shown is made from a square piece of cardboard ABCD that's had the corner C folded to the center of the square. So you can see it here folded over. Find the position of the center of mass of the lamina. So I'm just going to place this on a coordinate grid and then I can then write down the coordinates of these different points here. So it's going to be four there and four here. So this point here is going to be two that way and this point here is also going to be two so as we've done previously when we've got these composite laminas uh, we put our information in the table so i've got the square which i need to remove this corner from but i also need to add on this as it's been folded over so i've put a plus and a minus there to remind me so we'll start with the area so the square is just going to be four times four so it's an area of 16. The triangle, half the base times the height. So the base is 2 and the height is 2. So half 2 times 2. So it's an area of 2. And the bit that's folded over, that's going to be the same because it's the same shape, just in a different position. Now for the center of masses, for the square, I can just use symmetry. Uh, the lines of symmetry are going to cross at the point 2, 2. So two and two. Then for the triangle, what I'm going to do is uh, add together the X coordinates divided by three, add together the Y coordinates divided by three. So for the corner that's missing, its X coordinates are here, here and here. So its X coordinates are two, four and four. So that's gonna be two, plus four plus four and i'm going to divide that by three so that's going to be 10 over three and then the y coordinates of that corner that's uh, missing they're also uh two four and four so that's going to be the same working same answer so that's also going to be 10 over three and then for the extra bit here that we're going to add on, um, its x coordinates are 2, 2, 4. So we've got a 2, we've got a 2 and a 4. So and divide that by 3. So that's going to give us 8 over 3. And for its y coordinates of this corner, we've got 2, 2 and 4. OK, so the same there. So that's also going to be. 8 over 3. So now we can start our working for x bar and y bar. So x bar, uh, we're going to take each area and multiply by its center of mass in the x direction. So we've got 16 times 2, then minus 2 times 10 over 3, because that corner is missing, but then plus, because we've got this extra triangle now folded over, 2 times 8 over 3. And we're going to divide that by the sum of the masses. Now, remember, it's going to be 16 minus 2 plus 2. No, 
that's going to give us 92 over 3 and we divide that by 16 and that gives us 23 over 12 and then we'll work out y bar and again we take each area and multiply by center of mass in the y direction so 16 times by 2 minus 2 times by 10 over 3 that corner's been taken out plus the folded over bit 2 times 8 over 3 and we divide that by the sum of the masses which is going to be 16 minus 2 plus 2 and you can see that's exactly the same working as I had up here. So it's going to give me exactly the same answer, 23 over 12. So I have my X bar and Y bar. Um, I guess I could give it as a coordinate um, if I take A as the origin. So I'll just write that down um, with A at the origin, the center of mass mass is position now this is centimeters 23 over 12 centimeters comma 23 over 12 centimeters if we want to give answer in that form example 22 the triangular framework is uh, shown is made from three pieces of uniform wire AB, AC, and BC of mass 2m. So this one's 2m. Let's put that on the diagram. 2m here. Uh, BC, that's uh, sorry, AC, 3m, and 5m. And then what we need to do is to find the coordinates of the center of mass of the framework. Now, normally with a framework, what we would do is we will take the length and use that as the mass in our working but here we've actually been given masses and it's non-uniform because all the masses are different so we'll start with x bar so a is at the origin here we can see it's on a coordinate grid so we still take the center of the wire as the as its center of mass so we'll do that first so we'll start with ac and find the center of mass of ac so basically we want to take its two coordinates add them together divide by two to find the midpoint so um, between a and c what we have is x coordinates of zero and four so we do zero plus four divided by two and y coordinates also of well, 0 for 1 and 2 for C, divide by 2. So that gives me a center of mass of 2, 1 for the wire AC. Then for AB, we'll do the same thing again. So for AB, it's two coordinates, X coordinates at either end are 0 and 2. And its Y coordinates are at 0 and 1, 2, 3, 4. So 0 plus 4 divided by 2, that gives its center of mass as 1, 2. And lastly, for the wire BC. Now, I could probably just get these straight from the diagram because um, they're, they're pretty easy, but I'm just doing the working just to make doubly sure. So uh, from point B to C, X coordinates are 2 and 4. So 2 plus 4 divided by 2. And the y coordinates are also 2 and 4. So they're both going to be 6 divided by 2. So the midpoint is 3, 3. And I can see that clearly on the diagram. Right, so let's start with x bar now. Now we have that information. So if we start with the wire that goes from A to B, so that's 2m times by its center of mass in the x direction, which is 1, then the wire. Um, AC, which has a mass of 3m, and its center of mass in the x direction is 2. And then the BC, which has a mass of 5m, and its center of mass of BC in the x direction is 3. We divide that by the total masses, 
2m plus 3m plus 5m. As is normal with these questions, the uh, m's are going to cancel out. So that will give us 23 over 10. So that's 2.3. And for y bar, start with AB, mass of 2m. Its center of mass in the y direction is 2. And then AC, uh, that is 3m, center of mass in the y direction is 1. And then the BC, 5m, center of mass in the y direction is 3, divided by 2m plus 3m plus 5m. So that would give us 22 over 10, which is 2.2. So they want the coordinates of the center of mass. So it's not in centimeters or anything like that. And that's just going to be 2.3 comma 2.2. So there we go. Fairly straightforward question that. So you should now be able to, uh, to do exercise 2H on pages 70 to 72, then followed by the mixed exercise. Uh, so yeah, just uh, a couple of bits of recap here. Um, what in what we do when we have uh, these non-uniform um, frameworks or laminas.